Welcome to Full Stack Vectors, Pine Cone Edition. The only prerequisite you'll need to follow along is to know what a vector is. Let's do a one minute crash course on vectors. If you were to ask me, what's my age, I'd say 34. You see how a single value suffices? But if you were to ask me, how do I make this basketball go into the hoop? I'd say throw it in this direction, at this angle, and with this speed. You see how multiple values are needed in the second scenario? Multidimensional values are what define vectors. You can represent almost anything as a vector, which is just a list of numbers. My personality can be represented as a vector. An image can be represented as a vector. A sentence can be represented as a vector. We won't be getting technical, but just know that the way data is converted into a vector is by using a special type of neural network called an embedding model. Once data is converted into a vector, we can easily compare these vectors to understand how similar or different the underlying data is. The way this works is simple. For example, let's say we have three people, a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a 30-year-old. We have the intuitive notion that the five-year-old and seven-year-old are closer in age compared to the 30-year-old, right? This intuition of how we compare the ages of people is the same intuition behind how we compare vectors. The closer two vectors are, the more similar we interpret the data they represent to be. The way we can find out if two vectors are similar is by feeding them into a special algorithm. The special similarity algorithm we will be using in this video called cosine similarity will spit out a value close to one when the vectors are similar and a number close to negative one when the vectors are not similar. Okay, that takes care of all the prerequisites. Now let's have fun. In this video, we're gonna demo six applications that will showcase what vectors can do for your life, your businesses, and your applications. Throughout the video, we'll be storing our vectors into a vector database platform called Pinecone. All of the code for these six applications is linked in the description. Here we have an agent powered by Claude and Langchain. We can chat with it just like we would with ChatGPT. This agent even has memory. You can see it remembers my name. Okay, let's now ask this LLM agent something very specific and see how it does. I'm going to ask about a weekly meetup in Miami called GP Tuesday that I've been attending over the past year to help me learn more about AI. I'll say, I missed the last GP Tuesday meetup. I'd like a recap of what was discussed. The outputs of LLMs like Claude are only based on the data they were trained on. And we can see that the version of Claude we're using hasn't been updated since June, 2024. I'm recording this two months after June, 2024 in August. So there's no chance Claude would know the specifics of last week's GP Tuesday meetup. In the next demo, we're going to combine this LLM agent with the use of vectors. Here we have an LLM agent that I've called the GP Tuesday agent. Unlike the previous agent, this one uses RAG. RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation, is a technique that combines the use of an LLM with the use of a vector database. Here's how it works. The only prerequisite for using RAG is collecting some accurate data regarding the domain that we want the LLM agent to focus on. For our use case, I've generated 40 Q&As related to the GP Tuesday meetup that we will convert into vectors and then upload to Pinecone. I'm storing these Q&As in a text file with one Q&A on each line. We could just as easily have recorded these Q&As in a Google spreadsheet, but I prefer text files. Anyways, here is a snippet of code that will A, read the Q&As one by one, B, convert each Q&A into a vector using a free embedding model provided by Hugging Face called All Mini LM L6 V2. I have this embedding model running in my Google Cloud account. And C, upload the resulting vectors to Pinecone with metadata that includes the original question and answer each vector represents. After we run this script and see our vectors in Pinecone, we can start doing RAG. Before we run this script though, we have to create the database and database index that will hold our vectors. To create a Pinecone database, all we have to do is sign up on pinecone.io and create a project. I will call the project we will use full stack vectors. After creating the project, we then have to create what is called an index. A Pinecone index is where we can store vectors or records. For our index, we'll use the default cosine similarity algorithm and specify that our vectors will have 384 dimensions. As our embedding model, all mini LM L6 V2 generates vectors with 384 dimensions. Different embedding models, which are just types of neural networks, will generate different size vectors for representing the data being passed through them. You can call your indexes whatever you like, but I like to call my indexes after the embedding models being used to generate the vectors they will hold. Now that we have our vector database and index set up, let's run the script to ingest our data. Mm -hmm. 
Notice that we now have 80 vectors in our index, which is double the amount of Q&As we had in our file. This is expected as we are generating a vector for each question and each answer so that we can match against either half of a Q&A. Now we can try retrieval augmented generation. Let's send this message to the GP Tuesday agent. I missed the last GP Tuesday meetup. I'd like a recap of what was discussed. Now we're getting responses that are more catered to our domain. Here is a diagram walking us through what just happened. One, we sent some prompt to our agent. Two, our prompt got converted into a vector. Three, we searched our Pinecone knowledge base for the vectors that are most similar to the vector representing our prompt. And Pinecone returned to us the original data represented by the highest matching vectors. Four, we combined the most relevant data to our prompt with the original prompt and sent that to our LLM. And five, we returned our final output. Two business use cases I can think of for RAG agents would be one, generating social media content, AKA create vectors representing your highest performing posts and work with a RAG agent to generate new material in your style. And two, drafting emails, text messages, or any other forms of correspondence, AKA create vectors representing your communication history and have a RAG agent automatically draft responses to save you time. We will now show how you can use a reason and act or react agent for accessing multiple knowledge bases using Pinecone. The first knowledge base we will use will hold vectors representing Q&As related to the famed Miami-based weekly AI meetup, GP Tuesday. And the second knowledge base we will use will hold vectors representing Q&As related to me, yours truly. Let's ingest our knowledge. Here is a script that will A, read in a batch of Q&As, B, convert each Q&A into a vector using a free embedding model provided by Hugging Face, all mini LM L6 V2, and C, upload the resulting vectors to Pinecone along with metadata that includes the original question and answer each vector represents. Pinecone allows us to partition the vectors held inside of a single database index into groups called namespaces. So what we'll do is upload the first batch of vectors representing data related to the Miami-based meetup, GP Tuesday, into a namespace or group called GP Tuesday, and upload the second batch of vectors representing data related to me, yours truly, into a namespace or group called TAD. Both of these groups of vectors will sit inside of the same database index. First, let's upload the Q&As related to GP Tuesday. And second, let's upload the Q&As related to Tad, AKA me. Now that we've ingested the data for our two knowledge bases, we should see some vectors as well as some namespaces inside of our index. Let's now test out our React agent. When we ask our agent about the GP Tuesday meetup, we want relevant info from the GP Tuesday namespace to be returned. And when we ask about Tad, AKA me, we want relevant info from the Tad namespace to be returned. Let's say, tell me about GP Tuesday. Notice the bold black text below the message loader that indicates which group of vectors is being accessed. That looks good. Let's now say, tell me about Tad. That also looks good. Let's walk through what's happening here. One, we send some prompt to our agent. Two, the LLM powering our agent will decide if this prompt is related to any supported knowledge bases. If it's not, the LLM returns directly. If it is though, we continue. Three, we convert our input prompt into a vector. Four, we compare the vector representing our input prompt against the vectors in any knowledge bases the LLM has decided as being relevant and retrieve the original data represented by the highest matching vectors. Five, we combine all retrieved data with the original prompt and send that to our LLM. And finally, in six, we receive the final output from the LLM and return that to whomever is using our agent. React agents are powerful and can be expanded to search across many knowledge bases. Two business use cases I can think of for React agents would be one, customer relationship management, where each group of vectors is associated with a particular customer for generating individualized sales, marketing, and support scripts. And two, higher education, where each group of vectors is associated with a course offered by an institution so that students approved to take the course have course material available at their fingertips. Let's now take a look at how we can use vector embeddings and Pinecone to create a simple workout recommendation system in three steps. Step one, let's seed our vector database with some data. For our use case, this means dozens of workouts. Creating a Pinecone database and database index is easy. All we have to do is sign up on Pinecone's website, create a project, and then create an index. I've already done this for my account, so let's reuse this existing index. This index can hold vectors created by the all mini LM L6 V2 embedding model. Note that even though this index already contains vectors, it's okay 
because Pinecone lets us partition vectors inside of indexes into separate groups called namespaces. Here is the script that will generate the vectors representing our workouts and then insert them into Pinecone along with the metadata about each workout's original details. Note that we are including the email of the person who created each workout in the metadata for each vector, so we can later add some spice to our recommendations. For the purposes of this demo, let's pretend Arnold Schwarzenegger is who created these workouts in our system. Let's now run this script and seed our database. After running this script, we should see another namespace called workouts containing some number of vectors. Step two, let's write some code for generating recommendations. Here is the code that will produce our recommendations. When someone calls this code from their device, we will A, receive the text that indicates what type of workout they're looking for, B, convert their query text into a vector using allmanylm6v2, and C, use Pinecone to find out which workouts are most similar to their query. Notice how we are spicing up our recommendations by not including any workouts that we have created in the system. Pinecone has this cool metadata query language for layering on some extra processing when generating results. Step three, let's test this all out. If I search upper body, our top recommendation is shoulder taps. Gonna make sure I do those today. If I search lower body, our top recommendation is high knees. Gotta make sure I do those uh, tomorrow. We are now going to show how you can use vector embeddings stored in Pinecone for cybersecurity purposes. Here is a table consisting of all the login attempts user number two has made into some hypothetical system. Each time someone logs into this hypothetical application, we will compare the vector representing the characteristics of their login, like their IP address, time of login, and device type, against the vectors representing their past login attempts. In this application of vector embeddings, we are looking for dissimilar matches to detect potentially suspicious activity. For example, this login attempt right here, for some reason, is not as similar as the others. So what we could do when activity like this is detected is send a text or email letting the account holder know something suspicious is happening or trigger a multi-factor auth flow so we ensure the true account holder is logging in. In this demo, we will showcase the power of multimodal embeddings. Multimodal embeddings enable us to connect data across sensory mediums. Let's take a look. Here is an application for locating multimedia assets related to a search query. Let's search for media assets related to the term outdoors. You can see we get outdoorsy images. Let's search for media assets related to the term drugs. Our top result is in fact an image of Adderall. Let's now search for media assets related to the term speed. I guess somebody who has ADHD might take speed. And notice how we're also getting an audio result. This audio result sounds to me like a speed racer. Note that we are not doing string comparison against the metadata of these media assets when searching, but instead are comparing the vector representing the search query against the vectors representing the media assets themselves. The embedding model we are using to power this functionality is called ImageBind. ImageBind was released by Meta in May 2023. ImageBind lets you search for audio using images, images using audio, and much more. You can access ImageBind embeddings via a platform called Replicate.com. Shout out to Alex Comerford for putting me onto this. Here is the script that I use to upload a few of my media assets to ImageBind for conversion into vectors. After each media asset is converted into a vector, you can see we are storing the resulting vector into a database index hosted by Pinecone. After the vectors representing our media are stored into Pinecone, or any other vector database for that matter, we can perform searches. If you want to try this yourself using Pinecone, you'll need to make sure you create an index in your account that supports vectors with 1024 dimensions. Let me show you how to do that. After signing up on Pinecone's website, you'll see an option to create indexes in your dashboard. Let's create an index called ImageBind 1024 Dimensions. I like naming indexes after the embedding models that generate the vectors they will hold. After we have an ImageBind compatible index, we can run seed scripts to upload vectors representing our media. After we see vectors in the index, we'll be able to perform multimodal searches. Multimodal embeddings are amazing for creatives and media editors, as they allow for easier search across media assets when producing content. Full stack vectors, pinecone edition. 
GP Tuesday edition, 305 edition, like, share, comment, subscribe edition.